Okay, so I want to encourage you to take a deep breath if you've been having trouble breathing, like I have during that. Um, and some things I think to notice are the sort of calm detachment of the physician's voice. So the physician is not at all distressed by this. And the way the baby's crying, I hear the baby's crying as the way, way I hear babies cry when they're in extreme duress, not, you know, I'm hungry. So, beyond the pain of the procedure itself and the pain of the many days it takes to heal, there are a number of complications that a circumcision procedure puts a child at risk for. You can sort of divide them into two categories. Surgical complications, which go from the more minor, you know, everyone has a scar who's been circumcised. A lot of men don't actually know that the ring around their penis is the circumcision scar, or they learn it when they hear my talk. Um, <laughs> But, but that always happens. But a number of other complications can be problematic that, are, that don't occur all the time, like a penile adhesions. When the healing process goes awry in two parts of the penis that weren't supposed to be connected, linked together. Um, and then these panels show in the top left, A, that's called a fistula. So it's like a doctor-induced hypospadias. The black line going down is a probe that's entering the meatus, the opening of the urethra, and exiting out the additional hole that the physician has caused. And uh, B is a nearly amputated head of the penis. C, so much skin of the penis was removed that the child's corpus cavernosa and head of the penis are lodged down inside the scrotum. And in D, the penis was accidentally amputated entirely. There are also a number of post-operative complications, ranging from difficulty breastfeeding, which is important because breastfeeding is a very important, developing the ability to breastfeed is very important for children. Um, bleeding, which is another sort of minimizing term. You see that on consent forms, and you're like, oh, bleeding. Well, it turns out an infant has 12 ounces of blood. So bleeding a couple ounces may, may actually cause that child to die or need a blood transfusion. Um, increase in pain response. Infection, which is also very serious for a newborn. Uh, meatitis, which is an irritation of the opening. And that also can be problematic because if it gets bad enough, the child won't be able to pee, and that'll cause you to need catheterization. Um, necrosis, and even permanent loss of the penis or death. Um, I talked with a pediatric urologist. Those are the people who get the complications to deal with. And he said in a two-year period, he had over 275 kids he had to treat, almost half of whom required surgery. So they were subjected to an additional surgery in order to attempt to correct whatever had happened. OK, so that's most of the graphic stuff. Um, Except for in the next few slides, we'll see some pictures of the actual anatomy of adults. So you're also welcome to turn your head aside at that. How many people have, have seen a penis that was uh, intact? Either your own or a friend's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, go see if you can find, if you haven't yet, see if you can find someone who's willing to show you. Um, so I, I've talked with hundreds of men, you know, both men who've been, who've been circumcised and men who have not been circumcised. And I hear a lot of men who were circumcised feel upset about that. They are aware that something, or they've come to be aware that something was taken away from them, and that their body was subjected to something without their choice. Um, 